Okay, I think we should start. We are going to be seeing uh, four films today, so uh, I don't want to delay any longer. Let me remind you that on Friday there will be Tom McCarthy, who's the author of uh, the Remainder, um, in discussion with Rod Dickinson. He'll also be showing uh, bits of film which he has scripted. But today, uh, I want to welcome Marcel Rodenbach. Uh, he was part of the first wave of video-based conceptual art in Germany in the 70s, and he is one of Germany's leading video artists. In this country, we've had little opportunity to see his work, uh, though I know some of it was included in a show at Tate Liverpool in the late 80s, which he can't remember. Um, <laughs> No, no, the Liverpool one. <laughs> <laughs> Today, he will be showing, well, I thought two works in their entirety, but he's also added a three-minute film and a ten-minute film to this. The two works uh, that uh, I knew he was showing, uh, he wanted to show entire, in their entire form, uh, because his approach necessitates, um, necessitates this because of the way the work is conceived and structured in time. So the first of these is In Still Waters, Crocodiles Lurk. It's a work on the Rwandan genocide of 1994. It was completed in 2004. And his newest work, and the second of these films, is Turning Circles. Uh, it's on the Majinek Mausoleum, built on the site of the Lublin extermination camp in 1969. Marcel Odenbach uh, lives in Cologne and has worked in New York and Ghana. He speaks of the individual citizen's passivity and activity in terms of sight. To see something is to implicate oneself in its fate. To see is to experience the present in the framework of the past. There can be no state of neutrality toward history. Of course, you cannot represent history as such, but you can experience the, pre experience the present in the framework of the past, and this is what he does, and he makes us do. I, I have more, but I think I'll just leave it. Uh, I want to thank Marcel Odenbach for coming to speak and to show us his work, and I've been looking forward to this moment. So please welcome him. Good evening. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, now she said already everything. Uh, I want to show, like, I'm, I started to uh, work with the video 74, 75. So um, in this more than 30 years, I did, of course, a lot of different films, video installations. And it's always difficult to decide which one you would like to show. Um, but I would like to start with, like you see, with a quite early one, because not only it's just funny to see me as a young man, uh, but it's always it's also representing the way how I started with video, and also how video started in general. And then I show a piece which one might, which one was very important for me. It's like. A, self-portrait and which one might show you that I start studied architecture and I never went to an art school and this might be also a big honor for me because I think it's the first time I'm talking in an architectural school and um, I, st I my first experience with video was in my studies doing architect, uh, architecture. And um, I was very much involved in, a, in the political change of architecture in the early 70s, mid 70s. And there was a very famous restoration of the um, center of um, Italian city called Bologna. And what I was fascinated in this time was because the people, they moved back into the center of Bologna they founded their own TV station. So in a way, this was 
kind of the first private TV station which one was existing in Italy. And this was giving me the idea that everybody should do TV and that TV belongs to the people. So I was full of this like uh, little bit romantic political ideas what TV could do. So I decided I'd do TV by myself and um, I bought the first video camera and I went into the city and I tried to do certain kind of like interviews with people about the city, how they feel about the housing, how they feel about like changes in the city and so on. So this, so my first experience with video was very c close or very much connected to my studies of architecture. And the other influence of course was uh, the video art, like the early guys like Bruce Nauman and Vito Akonji because in between my studies I went many times to the United States and I m made my money of living in New York over the summer of working in galleries. And the first galleries I worked in were like video galleries, which one, are do which one doesn't exist anymore. But every big gallery in this time, like Iliana Sonnabend and people like this, they had a video gallery and I was confronted with video. And I decided immediately this is what I want to do because that is much more modern than doing a painting and this is much more um, interesting for me because it's combining f f um, image, it's combining sound and it's combining movement. So the first videos um, were very simple and the first videos were kind of like this famous closed circuit situation. I had a black and white camera and I was my best actor because I was sitting in front of the camera and there was no editing facility and there was no facility of changing the image in this time. So the piece you will see is one of the last pieces I did in this very simple way. And all the pieces which one I will show today or which one I'm doing have also very kind of personal relationship. So this is a piece which one I did with a um, director together. His name is was Gabo Bodhi, who was a, an Hungarian director who died in the early 90s. And I met him this day in this apartment in Paris. And the funny thing is, was, I don't know if somebody knows her still, uh, Maria Schneider, she was doing this famous movie with uh, Marlon Brando in Paris. And this was the apartment of Maria Schneider. I was staying there by coincidence. I never had an affair with her. I never had met her once. And the guy too. So we decided we do something. And we did this piece which one is called, which one is funny now too, because it's called the dialogue between East and West.
he was much better than I was. Uh, <laughs> and it was a bit like, uh, I mean, as a kid being born in Germany after the Second World War, where when I'm, I think like mid early 70s, the East German country was very heavy. So we had all these discussions on TV between East and West. So it's in a certain way kind of like a joke we did about the normal, regular political German TV in this time. Um, good. Um, in soon videos started to change a lot because then you had color cameras and then you had the first facilities also to influence the image and I had my first kind of like editing system and I was trying to um, find tricks and to, to influence the image and stuff like this and also I was more and more interested in combining or using footage material which one was in this time still possible in the way that I was using the camera and I was shooting something from the screen of from TV. And um, the second piece I would like to show, it's for me quite of an important piece. It's not so much because I got a, the first prize in Locarno for the piece and I got the first video prize in Germany for the piece. So which one turned me into suddenly a German video artist? No, it was, interest, it was important for me because I, um, I found kind of like a certain style and um, it's called the um, distance between myself and my losses and it's like a biography it's dealing about myself and it's a dealing about myself as a German kid being born after the second world war and it's dealing with the idea what does it mean to be German and what does it mean to have an identity and what does it mean to have a history and especially for me it was important because I had no idea what I was and what was German in me because my father is born in Holland, was born in Holland, my grandfather in France. I had one grand grandmother who was Austrian, the other one was Belgian and the other grand grandfather was Russian and one was Turkish. So I was born in Germany by coincidence and suddenly I was confronted with all this heavy history and um, I did a piece about me being a German and dealing with this history and um, I think what is in, uh, interesting in this piece is I invented this like split screen and most of the um, screen is black so I reduced the image to a kind of like to a really little split and for me two things were important and I think this is also an influence of my studies because for me the split screen is a little bit like a window in reality and for me the question was always important what is inside and what is outside so who is an outsider in society and who is an insider so who is on the street who's watching into the window and what do you see outside what do you see inside or for example who is a victim and who is a murder and in this case I you see like two sentences which one are unfortunately in German sorry but which one are from Sigmund Freud and which one are dealing about a person his name was Peter Kürten and this guy was a sexual murder in the 20s in Germany and he killed like I think I don't know maybe let's say 70 people and he sold the dead bodies at, as meat to a butcher so uh, it was a certain way of cannibalism too and Freud is dealing about the idea why there has to be always a victim in society so okay Oh, I wanted to say put the piece in. <laughs> I have to do it. Um, the, 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 the other important thing in the piece is um, there's a song by Schubert, which one is after a poem of Goethe, which one is called The Earl King. And this is a poem which one every German kid has to learn in school. 
and you listen to this at the beginning. And the other interesting thing is what you see then afterwards is that I, this was the first time I was um, involving already in my pieces a different culture, and in this case is uh, music by Burundi, by people from Burundi. I'm 
Reißt deine schöne Gestalt und bist du nicht willig, so brauch ich Gewalt. Mein Vater, mein Vater, jetzt fasst er mich an. Der König hat mir ein Leid getan. Im Vater gebaut Ich 
Sorry for having the menu and the image, but we try to get rid of it soon. <coughs> I call sometimes the piece like my private peep show. So um, I think what was influencing me of doing the piece was this um, memory as a kid when you were looking through a key keyhole into another room and then you just saw a bit of something on action going on and the rest was building up in your fantasy. What? Yeah. Sorry for first like handling here this. So now we make a huge step and um, I will show now a piece which one I finished 2004. Um, now we, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, is the thing going out? No. Sorry, first I would like to screen and stop. Oh, it's gone. Perfect. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Um, this is a piece I finished 2004, and it's also a special piece for um, of, of mine. When um, what you saw in the piece before already was like, um, I started in the early 80s. What I said before of using footage material. So what was becoming important for me already was like collecting materials without any idea what to do out of the material. So it's, it's not the way that I have an idea and then I'm starting like a director to get a team together and then we go somewhere and then we shoot and then it's ca coming one step after the other. So what I'm doing is like I'm working like a collage. So I have many like footage like um, collections and then I have some images which one I did already by myself with my own camera or then I have images which one I did with big with famous or non-famous but professional camera people and then I have sound ideas and then in, in the meanwhile so a piece is coming together and then I'm kind of like using all these materials in my house and then I'm making a piece out of it in the editing, so, uh, with the editing facilities. Um, in the new, in the 90s, I couldn't use anymore all the footage material which one I wanted to use because of rights and laws and uh, problems with, 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 with paying um, things and stuff like this. So I decided I redo them. So in the new piece, um, I have two films which one influenced me for a long time. And when I was thinking of doing something about Rwanda, I decided there will be two films which one will I will quote in the film, but of remaking them by myself. This is Persona by Ingmar Bergman, because there is this woman who saw this burning Buddhist on TV, and she got a traumata since then. And um, for me, this was interesting of going to Rwanda and dealing with people. They had 94, this incredible genocide, where like in three months, one million Tutsis or whatever, Tutsis and Hutus got killed. 
of course, they, were to they are completely traumatized. And the other film was by Pasolini, The Matthew Passion. Um, and I decided I'm using this as kind of like an impact for dealing with this incredible, beautiful landscape. Because if you go to Rwanda, which one was really like an incredible impact for me was that you go there and you have the idea you are like in, 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 in a country of the Bible because it's so lush and so rich and so beautiful. And then it makes you double difficult to understand that in a beautiful, lush country like this, a genocide could happening. Um, and the whole idea of working about Rwanda was starting in 95 when I got a job at the United Nations. They asked me, um, they invited like out of every country, they invited one artist to do something about the 50th anniversary. And I decided I would like to do something about refugees because refugees always played in my family a big part and also played in the German history a big part. So I went to New York and I had the opportunity to work in the archive of the United Nations and to do something in 95 for their 50th anniversary. And in this time I was sitting there and working. I was con constantly, even before 95, I was constantly confronted with this material of Rwanda and I couldn't understand that this happened again, a genocide like this, and I couldn't understand that nobody did something about it. So I decided I want to do something about Rwanda, and it took me like 10 years to do it because I had to travel there, of course, more than one time. I went there with a camera person. I was arrested in Rwanda. I, I got no, no license to shoot. So it was a very complicated project. And um, I did this double. I did an installation out of it. So it um, consists out of two big screens. And you see now a version where you see both screens together. Um, nothing is in German, so it's, uh, the text is also in English. And the um, piece is 31 minutes long. And we maybe can discuss afterwards about it. 